Awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, up next, we are introducing to the stage uh, Simon Redfern, Joshua Goodbody and Robert Rico. And we're discussing today the topic of building a crypto enabled financial services infrastructure using APIs, of course. So welcome to the stage, everybody. I hope you're having a good day. Um, I don't know if we wanted to start with a bit of round robin introductions to, to everybody who's on the call. So Robert, do you want to start first? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you to the API, D API Day folks for having us. Really honor and pleasure to be here. Uh, as Ben said, my name is Robert Rico. Um, I lead our open backing efforts at API3. At API3, what we do is essentially we created a solution that, that allows APIs to connect to the Web3 uh, easily and directly without any type of blockchain knowledge. And, you know, we do this through a serverless function that essentially runs on the API from the API cloud providers, and which allows for these just a really smooth and easy connection to the Web3 space. So, yeah, we're really excited about connecting APIs to the Web3 space. Josh, um, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Ben. And thanks for having us today on API Days. Uh, my name is Josh Goodbody. I'm the COO uh, here at Credo. At Credo, what we do is we are a fully distributed infrastructure provider for custody and settlement of, of digital assets. We're a fully open architecture. Uh, all of our source code is open. Um, we're able to be integrated by absolutely anyone. We believe in um, open source code and open networks. Um, and everything that we have built from a custodial perspective can be fully driven via API. So this is a really relevant forum for us. And we're excited to dive in and talk today. Interesting, interesting. And, and Simon, you may not need an introduction on the API Day stage, but uh, do you want to quickly introduce yourself and um, share with the audience you know, your background? And... Yeah, thanks, Ben. Um, yeah, and thanks to API Days for having me back again. It's, it's several years now. Uh, I forget the first. I think the first appearance was in Paris. Uh, I can't remember, remotely from, yeah. Anyway, I'm uh, CEO of Tosobi. Uh, we're based in Berlin and founder of the Open Bank Project. And, nice. Awesome. Yep. So um, just a quick note to the audience before we jump in. If you have any questions as we as we run through this kind of panel talk, um, feel free to share um, and we can kind of blend them into the questions or make sure they get answered. So feel free to come forward. So just the first question to everybody here. Um, I just wanted, just wanted to start, Joe has just introduced kind of the concept of Web 3.0, but, you know, what, how, what do you see as... What, what would you think of to Web 3.0? And then afterwards, what do you think to the role that APIs play in Web 3.0? Where does one start? Um, I'm happy to kind of kick off, but you know, Web 3.0 um, is, is a really, really broad topic, right? Where do we start with Web 3.0? You know, it's a, it, it should be and will be a fully kind of distributed, decentralized architecture. It'll be open, it'll be accessible to everyone. And the way that all these different service providers will interact with Web3 is going to be the main challenge. And hence why this topic is super relevant for us today, because the, the world of, um, of, of APIs is going to be critical to Web3.0 actually working and scaling. Um, so I think, you know, we're, we're just scratching the surface, I would say, in terms of what will be possible um, in Web3.0. We, we are yet to see how things are going to completely pan out. But we're yeah. seeing, you know, everyone on this call today playing their part in bringing forward Web 3.0 as, as kind of the next evolution of, of the digital space. So um, there are many ways we could go with this. APIs being one of the main thrusts, I think, and the most relevant topic for us to be discussing today. But um, it's, yeah, a massively exciting moment for us all to be playing our, playing our small part in making Web 3.0 a reality. Very well put, Josh. Very well put, so, Simon. Just, just uh, with your background as to Sobi, and obviously, you know, the, the uh, being very close to open banking and even the creation of the standards. You know, how, how what, what do you think to the current state of open banking APIs, and how do you see that converging with with Web three point Good question, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, you know it's um, it's worth just you know. Uh, thinking for a minute, you know, why APIs came into existence, right? So uh, APIs came into existence because people wanted to decouple the systems. Um, 
people wanted to make it kind of easy and uh, predictable to interface to a system, right? So that's the whole point of REST, right? That it's a, it's an architecture which, like, uh, lets the developer think less, you know? Uh, so if you have a well kind of designed REST RESTful API, then you see some of the endpoints and you can, um, yeah, pretty much kind of uh, intuit what the other endpoints, what the related endpoints are, you know. Mm. Uh, if it's a well-designed REST API, right, uh, obviously you have SOAPy APIs and so on where, you know, where you see like verbs creeping into the URLs and then it's, then it's not very... Um, very, very nice, and all the rest of it. But, but that—that's the aim of uh, of RESTful APIs, and I think, you know, this applies uh, to uh, web 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 three as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, actually, for API Days Hong Kong, I gave a talk uh, entitled "Where the Land Meets the Sea." You know, sort of. So where. Uh, the land, as in Web two, everything that we're kind of familiar with, and you know, many of uh, you know uh, developers who haven't yet got into blockchain are familiar with, and and the C is like the the, the blockchain, uh, yeah, space as it were, sort of underwater, unknown octopuses, octopi, is it plural? I'm not sure, <laughs> uh, but you know, lots of uh, unfamiliar stuff, lots of cryptography and so on and so forth right and you know and at the end of the day of course there are you know there are probably apis in there as well right like um mm. you know like api doesn't have to be restful right it can be uh uh it's it's just any kind of uh interface but i think you know apis provide a you know will play a huge role in just exposing these services uh and uh, yeah, and connecting these services, you know, to, you know, uh, other services uh, which are on the land, on the land, basically. Yeah. Very interesting. So the so, APIs yeah. are a bit like the the beach bar, if you see what I mean, like the interface between the. Everyone likes a beach bar, don't they? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So that sort of segues into my next next question, I think. So the the bridge between you know serverless you know infrastructure which is blockchain and DLT and then web two which operates in a centralized architecture, Rob, what what do you think uh, the key barriers are from from bringing web two data and APIs into what is you know a, a, a completely different ecosystem in terms of the the architecture behind it? Yeah, that's a very good question, and I think going picking back off what Simon's just saying is that there's this kind of beach bar now where there's like a meeting of the two of the, of the of these two worlds. So first is a, I think kind of the ability for APIs to connect to the web three before in our space, before API three in the air node, there was, there was a big um, a shift towards getting data towards uh, in the web three space. And that process, you know, took us to a really, uh, and a, a, leap, a leap forward in our space to getting data. But now with the air node, with API 3's air node, we're able to deliver data much quicker, much much more securely and efficiently in our opinion. And so say, for example, with the Open Bank project and our 10 year partnership, we were able to connect the 400 APIs or 500 APIs for Open Bank project within 15 minutes. And you know, mm -hmm. uh, and this is, and now connected into the Web 3.0, and before that wasn't there available. So that's one part. The other part, I would say, you know, regulation. Um, I have, my background is as, as an attorney, so I kind of look at these lenses through kind of like the legal industry. And, you know, so as countries al allow for different experimentations for this industry, for crypto in general, I think we're going to see much more industries coming aboard, uh, bigger enterprises financial institutions is coming aboard. And so having that pavement way of how to act will bring in more of this innovation. And yeah, I think, yeah. And uh, I think the, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. And just thinking about what's possible in Web 3.0, now they have access to a raft of, you know, legacy, you know, when I say legacy, not that that long really, but of open banking APIs and the new products that can come out for that and and how, I guess, financial institutions um, or, or traditional financial institutions can start to adopt this. And 
Josh, I'm just, just wondering, you know, given Corredo's kind of, uh, you know, what, what you guys do day in, day out, um, I was just wondering how you think this relates to financial institutions starting to adopt um, API-based services into Web 3.0, and whether you have any maybe any relevancy there from your background and, and how mm -hmm. this, this maybe start to play out in the real world. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think we've seen a real acceleration in banks and financial services organisations adopting, you know, new technologies at a at a pace that perhaps previously they weren't comfortable with, and. Uh, and Simon knows this full well, but, you know, the open banking movement um, took some time to take shape, but has borne huge amounts of fruit for the retail and corporate user in, in the banking space. And when that comes to crypto, that mindset is, is a very similar one, i.e. there's this new disruptive technology. These organizations have sat on the sidelines for a new, well, for a while and, and figured out what they want to do with this technology. And what they're realizing is it doesn't make sense for them to reinvent the wheel. They don't need to build everything internally in-house. They, they don't, frankly, have the appetite or the expertise to do that. So they're having to adopt this mindset, which is partnering with the best in breed and best in class technology providers out there. And this is all increasingly being driven through APIs. And so when we, when we as a, a custodial technology provider speak to a bank, the first question they ask is, can we drive everything we've seen in this demo with API? And there's this mindset that they've actually it's been encouraging to see how, how broad, broadly they've adopted this mindset, that they expect all of this rich functionality you're showing them to be able to be driven in a native um, environment where they can bring it into their internal systems, integrate it with their, to, to Robert's point, compliance systems, their AML, their KYC solutions, transaction monitoring. So bringing this different technology and it, letting it work with each other and interface with each other is, is, is now becoming the norm for these banking providers and financial services organizations that want to enter the crypto space. So everything that we've built, we've built with the mindset of being, being able to deploy this with and in partnership with proprietary solution providers, whether those are banking infrastructures, whether those are financial services organizations. And that is fully driven via our, our rich suite of APIs. And we see that the kind of in, internal resistance that was there maybe two years ago to this, where there was more of a mindset of actually we're going to build our own solution internally and only where we have to expose ourselves to, you know, a decentralized architecture or a decentralized protocol, whether that's Bitcoin or whatever you want it to be. That hesitancy has now slowly but surely decreased. So we think we're on the right track. And I think the, the folks around this table are definitely playing a part in making this whole ecosystem much more accessible to the wider, wider banking economy. Yeah, interesting. Thanks, thanks for your points, Josh, and everybody else as well. So, um, just just thinking about the kind of you know the, the two communities you've got. What is uh, you know an open source you know sovereign system as such, where you, you kind of you have uh, multiple communities building these products. Of the future almost and then on the other hand you have closed centralized architectures and systems um where maybe there's one one central person building it how do you see these two worlds effectively combining and of course the community is playing their role on both sides perhaps um in building this crypto enabled finance infrastructure I, I would answer that like I, I see it a bit like uh, you know the sun and the wind story right so the sun is having an argument with the wind or sort of trying to you know who's who's uh, who's the strongest you know and the wind blows they say they see a man with a coat on and they blow the the wind blows and blows it's you know it's wind and the guy just goes like this you know and then the sun <laughs> comes out and the guy takes off his coat and you know the sun wins the wins the wins the bet right and and i see open source uh and you know a, a, a bit like that right so it uh, it's a kind of generous approach and it um you know it it lets people be less worried about yeah vendor lock in and it lets them try 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 technology uh uh for you know for free and like with less risk in a sense and then the whole distributed thing is is i'm not sure if it's an extension of that but it's similar to that right it's basically mm. saying well you know we want uh, technology to be able to run 
uh, you know, not just in one data center, but across multiple, uh, you know, uh, uh, multiple nodes. Uh, I know the Credo technology works like that, right? Which is, which is cool. Um, and yeah, and uh, so open source will win out in the end. And um, yeah, I mean, obviously there are countries around the world which don't really like the crypto stuff, you know, but so far it survived, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, so to, just just really interesting point there around you know moving to a you know distributed uh, systems with no single point of failure and trust based, you know trust is certified within the blockchain and the node infrastructure. So, so that is a new kind of concept and in, in in some ways can compete, I guess, with traditional finance operators. What, what do you think? How from the flip side, how do you see people starting to you know welcome this new infrastructure into? into where you know wherever they may be adopting it and as you say simon eventually that you know i i you know i think the the open source ecosystem will play out over the long period of time with better products and services so mm -hmm. on, the, on the other side i mean how do you see that playing out well i mean it's no secret about el salvador right and uh yeah. you know they've uh they've passed the bitcoin law and you you know uh ourselves around the table uh and uh, also other companies like Sovereign and so on. We, you know, we're doing stuff there, and you know that shows. I think that the that you know some members of the banking community there are interested in this uh, like hybrid hybrid solutions, right? Which is um, uh, which is um, yeah, combining uh, blockchains and. Is smart contracts, uh, Bitcoin and fiat, and, and and so on. Yeah, and you know, on an yeah, so it's there's definitely happening there, right? Yeah. Interesting, interesting. And, and Rob, what 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 roles do you think the APIs that these financial institutions may start to look at from Web 2.0 into Web 3.0? Um, what what do you think maybe some of the the kind of key use cases are for those uh, APIs that are enabled? How do you see maybe open banking APIs starting to be you know, utilized and you know, turned into proof of concepts and adopted and scaled, et cetera? How, what, what kind of early ideas or, or kind of you know, insights do you have? Sure. I mean, one of the things that gets uh, discussed in our space is really kind of the, the interest yields that people are able to, to get in our space of, you know, you deposit you lend out your digital asset, whatever it may be, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XYZ, and you get a certain yield for that. And that yield can generate five, sometimes 10, 12%, depending on which protocol you're using. But it comes, it comes at, at it has that opportunity to generate these steady yields and these very well, there's always a security factor. And this is kind of like the, the opposite of that. But you know, our space does offer because it cuts out a lot of the inefficiencies in our, from our modern financial systems, these different protocols do offer these very competitive yields. So, you know, I think banks are going to try to offer that. I mean, financial institutions in general are going to see that. And like, wow, well, instead of earning from our general bank account 0.005% interest on the, on the deposit, well, now you can, now there's a, a possibility to earn. Robert, is that really, that. is that really the case then? I mean, is that really the 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 reason that it's just the, these uh, yeah uh, blockchain products, financial products, are more efficient and therefore less people uh, shuffling papers around and so on? Is that is that the deal? There's, I mean, that <laughs> I mean, there's, there's there's I mean, it comes at a risk, right? I mean, there's like say for example, Gio just mentioned the previous call. There was a, a, a just yesterday. There was a, I think, $140 million attack on a certain protocol, Cream, yeah. I believe it was called. And so there, it comes at a risk. Uh, not every protocol yeah. is safe. There's different protocols are have different security layers around them. Some have been more yeah. established. And yeah. so it, it, ha it has that, that, it comes at that risk. So um, not to say everything is the same, but yeah, there is different, these different inefficiencies that are addressed from the blockchain space. Hmm. Yeah. yeah super interesting and yeah when, when you think about efficiencies that you can create and maybe infrastructures that perhaps don't have the efficiencies um that you know you might expect then 
I, I see that as an opportunity to really drive value, right, for these um, for these institutions that might be, you know, open to exploring these emerging technologies and understanding what benefits they can really gain. So, yeah, I mean, super interesting to see it pan out. And I mean, th there's some kind of low hanging fruit, I think, around, you know, what real world use cases would you see? Um, you know, perhaps when you look at certain you know, countries, nation states with regulatory frameworks that are, you know, favorable for digital assets, you know, and, and what, what kind of yeah, things I think there's you see huge, starting to play out? I, I mean, there's a huge number of possibilities, right? But, um, you know, we're, we're organizing a hackathon, right? Uh, uh, dates i don't know but uh link below or something i suppose but but that's where we'll see you know a whole bunch of uh, uh you know ideas uh you know coming out and yeah. you know hackathons do lead to you know banks being founded and startups being bought by banks and blah 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 so i'm sure we'll see some good uh good ideas there but i think just the fundamental thing that you can have some source code right it, which is you know, it has a it has an ID. It's signed. It's on the it's on the it's on the blockchain. You know exactly what mm. it's going to do. It's transparent. Uh, you know, and then you know with you know, and then it can call this data right, whether it's the bank's own data, whether it's customers' data via open banking APIs. You know, like because of all the open banking, we have like a, you know consent frameworks which are you know much more advanced than they used to be. We've got different consent fr frameworks as, as well uh, around different possibilities which we might need to like evolve right so how do you authenticate between web 3 and uh, web 2 and open banking so that's stuff that we're working on mm, um, yeah i think lots and lots of possibilities but just the, just the fact that you have this code which is sitting there and then at some point like if my bank balance but falls below this or that it does something else or it falls it goes above this or that it does that you know does this or that um you know yeah, automatic uh, awesome yeah. so you mentioned you're doing a hackathon are you able to expand a little bit more on that or uh it's <laughs> uh in el salvador uh yeah there's uh the Big, bitcoin bankathon is what we're what we're calling it um interesting which interesting. is really, yeah really exciting it's in as as simon said it's in el salvador we're working on um essentially trying to ferment and catalyze a, a local community of builders uh we're going to provide them uh all the tools they need to build some really cool stuff and front and center of this is bitcoin and using bitcoin and how you can use bitcoin in real world use cases day-to-day -day payments, things related to that. So the use cases that we'd love people to explore are very simple. It's here. They're very you powerful. See that I'm just showing my screen briefly. So <laughs> uh, Bitcoin okay. Alliance um, org. Yeah. 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 Um, interesting, interesting. And, and of course, APIs are going to be crucial to, to kind of building that infrastructure into that, that financial institution, I assume, to enable, enable them to become a crypto first bank if, if, if so forth if the value is realized and you know things things do kind of you know products come out of the other end of it so super interesting guys um i'm just going to check if we find any questions from the crowd um from the audience the crowd, say, the the crowd, crowd. The, the far thousands from the of people here. there's nothing that i can see um and we've got roughly you know 30 seconds left so um yeah, in regards to the hackathon, I mean, yeah, BitcoinAlliance.org, you guys shared that, right? Um, yeah. If there's any any developers, anybody who's looking to get involved, obviously APIs is going to be a huge part of this this hackathon. So do feel free to get in touch with the guys, and I'm sure they'll be welcome to to kind of getting you involved in whichever way. Yeah, so, and we'll, be, we'll be providing APIs which will talk to blockchains and vice versa, right? Uh, so. I guess that's uh, what we try and do at hackathons, make it easy to consume services, you know, maybe in a slightly more test test uh, way. But yeah, Ben, I yeah. think we've caught time has been quite. Guys, yeah, thank you so much, guys, for finding the time to come on today and uh, everybody enjoy the rest of your days.